Welcome to our channel. My name is Tracy. I'm the keeper of the home here at 4D Farms, where we are all about home, family, and living this life that God has so graciously blessed us with. Our channel is full of content that I hope encourages you, inspires you, and most of all, helps you on your journey. Be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you will get notified every time new content is uploaded. We hope to see you in each and every video. Good morning, y'all. Welcome to today's video. Uh, today's video is going to be about my husband outdid himself again. Not just once, but twice. Okay? So today's video is going to be about uh, go, taking you through the process of him um, experimenting again and making deer bacon. Yes, deer bacon, okay? And I'll have to put these back on when I start reading my paper. But y'all know I'm going to have to talk you through this process because he's not going to do this for me and uh, not going to be on camera or anything. And he actually did this <clears throat> on some days when I was not able to get the camera out, okay? So I think he may have done that on purpose, okay? But what I did do... <laughs> was I was able to come in here and take little snippets of like when he would get done with the process. I think it was uh, the week that or the weekend that our, our granddaughters were here and I'm tied up with them and he's like, aha. You see, so I think he did that on purpose, but I'd come through the kitchen and I would see him getting done with the process and I'm gonna, okay. I'm not going to bother you. I'll just figure it out later. So, that's what I did. I got little snippets of what he was doing <clears throat> and um, got to get y'all some, some footage. Um, but we were on our way to town one day and I was like, okay, now I need you to go back and talk me through this process. Tell me what I need to write down. And of course, he's not a detailed person, y'all. Even when he talks, he's not a detailed person. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Back up. You've got to tell me word for word, <laughs> procedure for procedure, what you did. So I can turn this into a video. Y'all, bless his heart, he tried his best. I just kept having to pull that information out of him and ask the right questions so I could get it all down on paper, okay? So I'm going to try to talk y'all through this. Um, he took the last bit of his ground deer that we had already had our deer processor grind for us. Okay, it was his first deer and we had, you know, had just gotten home. Our season had just first started and he's like, okay, can you just go ahead and, and do this deer for me while I start my next hunt, you know? So he did and this was the last little bit of that ground deer that we had. So I'm going to talk you through this process and y'all, we discovered not only did he make deer bacon, this is like a, a bacon that you can use as a breakfast bacon and fry it up. Or, y'all, it turned out to be the taste and the consistency of like salami or spam. It was wonderful. And, you know, he watched some videos on how to do this too. And, oh, y'all, it was wonderful. So, it's kind of like we got two for the price of one, okay? We have been walking around here frying some up for breakfast um, or, or with some eggs and some toast or some biscuits. Or we've been frying it up and like a BLT. Um, and then we've been just slicing it off cold because it's already smoked. We'll get to that in a minute. Like salami and just which sitting down with cheese and crackers and pickles like a, a snack, okay? 
So we found more uses for this deer bacon besides just a breakfast bacon. And we have loved it. Our granddaughters will go around here and walk around with a slab of bacon and just eating on it. Like salami or pepperoni or summer sausage. Which brings me to my next point. He's like, that works so good. I want to try something else. Y'all, my husband likes to just get in here and play. Okay, so the deer bacon is made with 50-50, 50 deer and 50 um, pork, okay? And that, so I'll, I'll tell you the process in a minute. He turned around and made a summer sausage using the same techniques, process, directions, and pans, okay, and made a summer sausage. Oh my gosh, y'all, he just outdid himself. He used the same directions, same pans, same directions, but changed the meat and the seasonings and made a summer sausage. And how he did that was um, using all pork, chuck roast, that we had ground up, okay? It was good, y'all. And, and used it, the ground, the ground chuck, to use in the summer sausage. Now, the, the summer sausage is all ground chuck, okay? No deer. But it was the same process, okay? And we'll get to that. And he just switched the seasonings and added a few extra things. Oh, y'all. It turned out so good. He used um, a summer sausage seasoning and uh, added some bits. I'll show you all of his things in a minute. Uh, bits of uh, cheese that is only used for smoking. Now, you can't use just go out here and get cheddar cheese um, and try to do this because... <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm battling a cold right now that my granddaughters gave us. And uh, um, I'll probably lose my voice here in a minute. Um, it's a high-temperature smoking cheese, okay? So, not just, <coughs> sorry, your basic um, pepper jack and cheddar cheese, okay? All right, so I'm going to put my glasses back on. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to get a drink of water, too. This tickling in my throat is killing me. We're all congested. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, this is the process for the deer bacon. Okay. Um, I think I will insert a picture of the seasonings that he used for the deer bacon. Um, I'm thinking... Oh, my goodness. Um... I got a picture. It'll be on there. But he also used the um, Prague powder. Prague. Prague. How do you say this? It's a curing powder, okay? Um, the pink uh, curing powder for the bacon, okay? So, I'm going to try to talk y'all through this is the best way I can because, like I said, he did this when I couldn't take videos or get pictures, but I just got little snippets. But he talked me through the process, and I'm going to see if I can explain it to y'all. Okay, so you take 50% ground or cubed deer. We already had um, our pork butt uh, ground and our deer ground, okay? So, or we might not have already. Anyway, you're going to take, from y'all's standpoint, you're going to take 50% deer. You can either do ground or cube it up. <clears throat> and then ground or cubed pork butt. Okay? If it's cubed when you're doing it, then you're going to run it through your first grind. Okay? On the coarser grind. Um, and then, but if you're, if you're already, you've got, he had ground deer already, and ground pork butt, okay? So, or it might have been cubed, I don't know. But the set, he ran his through on the second grind, okay, finer, okay? So, if you're starting with cube, in other words, you're going to have two grinds on this meat, 
okay? You're going to have your first grind to get it ground, okay? Then you're going to have your second grind to finer, change the plate on your grinder to the finer grind, smaller grind, and then to mix in your seasonings, okay? So let me, let me get to that. So you're going to take 50% ground or cubed deer, 50% ground or cubed pork butt. You're going to season all this and you're going to mix it well, okay? Put, go ahead and put your seasonings in there. Mix it in, incorporate it, smush it, roll it around, mix it well. There is also an attachment that you can get for the grinder that we have, and it's a mixing tub, okay? You put all your meats in there and your seasonings, and it does, it'll, it'll run it through a mixer, but he doesn't like to use that. Uh, we actually bought one, and we sent it back, okay? Um... He likes to, to do it with his hands, y'all. Okay, now you're going to run through a coarse grind, okay, to incorporate all these seasonings, okay, to make sure it's in the meat very good, okay. Then keep it in your tub. Put your tub, or uh, you can you can take it out of your tub and put it in some bowls, and you're going to refrigerate this till very cold, okay? Because a point of, a number one point of when you're grinding meats, you don't want the meat to be room temperature because it gets gummed up in your grinder when the heat of the grinder hits it, okay? It will gum it up in there. We have found that when we are grinding any kind of meat, partially frozen, or very well refrigerated and very cold, okay? <clears throat> Sorry, y'all, I've I'm, I'm got the sniffles. I'm all stopped up, okay? Now, um, after it refrigerates for a long time and it gets really cold, then you're going to run through a finer second grind, okay? So, first, you're just going to take all your meat Put your seasonings in there, whether it's cubed or it's already ground, okay? You're going to take all your meat. You're going to put your seasonings in there. You're going to grind it up really good, okay? Then, I mean, yeah, mix it up really good. Then you're going to send it through that first grind, okay? Let it refrigerate for a long time. Let those seasonings... Let me say, let me stop right here. This process of making deer bacon took him a whole weekend, I believe. Three days, I think. Plan a time to do this because there is a lot of stopping and starting, refrigerating, and marinating, okay? Now, you can rush the process. Every time he had to put something in the refrigerator and let it sit, refrigerate, or marinate, he did it overnight, 24 hours, okay? Y'all, you can cut corners if you're in a hurry, but... It's not going to turn out as good. You've got to give this time enough to cure, soak into the meat, soak into the, the fibers, things like that. Time to cure. Okay, you can rush it, but I wouldn't do less than 8 to 12 hours each time. Just plan a time that you can have to do this at the uh, amount of times that it needs to sit, marinate, or refrigerate. And sometimes that's 24 hours, okay? So, then, um, so you're going to um, refrigerate till it's almost frozen or uh, very cold. Then you're going to run through the second grind, okay? So, you're getting all your seasonings in there. You're going to run it through the grinder twice, okay? Now, this is where you're going to add your water, you're going to add some water and enough water to just make it tacky. Not soupy, not to where you can see water in the bottom of your pan, but tacky. Where it's just kind of like still sticking to, he uses gloves, sticking to your glove or sticking to your hand. It needs to be tacky where it's still kind of sticking, okay? Now, um... Whatever pan you are going to be making this um, bacon in, 
you can either use a meatloaf pan, the long rectangular pan. He used a little square pan, not a 9 by 13. You can use a 9 by 13, uh, but he used the square, okay, because he wanted the uniformity. Same on each side. So he used a square pan. What are those? Uh, 8 by 8, maybe? 11 by 11? Whatever, okay? He wanted it square because when he cuts this, he wants it the same size, okay? So, um, whatever pan that you are going to be smoking these in, you might not want to use your wife's, um, good meatloaf pan, go get those aluminum pans, okay? Because you're going to be smoking this, smoking this meat in that pan for several hours, okay? So you don't want to mess up your wife's nice pans, okay? Use the aluminum ones. Now, because um, you're going to be smoking these, the pan that you're going to be using, you're going to need to line it with cling wrap, saran wrap, okay? Because you're going to have to be able to flip this over and it needs to come out without sticking to the bottom of your pan when you get ready to flip it over to the other side and coat that side with the seasonings. You'll see in a minute when I explain it why you need to line it, okay? So go ahead and line your bake your dish that you're going to smoke it in with saran wrap, okay? Because like I said, you're going to have to flip this baby to season the other side and you don't want that tackiness sticking to your pan and it pulls some of it apart and then you got some out here on your cutting board and you've still got some in your pan. Then you're gonna have to go back and shape it all over again and that's just a mess, okay? Line it with some um, some uh, plastic wrap, okay? The plastic wrap is not going to go in the smoker. It's just to be able to get it out of the pan better. Okay, now um, you're going to form your ground meat into your pan, making sure it's flat, and you're pushing that meat to all four corners, and it's even, like cake batter. You want it even, and you want it filling in those corners of your pan. Pat it down, okay? Um, you pressed into all the corners. Now, you're going to coat the top of your bacon, your meat, with whatever seasoning you want. Um, he did one, no, that's jerky seasoning. He did one that was a pepper blend. He did two loaves, so we could just taste test, y'all. And he made these seasonings up. He did one at, in a pepper loaf, which was just all different kinds of peppers, okay? Not, um, um, pepper seasoning, like black pepper, red pepper, you know, things like that. I don't know where that is at. I don't see it in here. If I can find out what it is, y'all, I'll put it in the description box below, okay? Uh, a pepper blend, okay? Then, he made one with cinnamon and brown sugar. Yes! Oh, my gosh, y'all. It was like a maple kind of brown sugary flavor, and it turned out so delicious. So, we did a sweet version and a, a um, uh, spicy version, okay? And, oh, it turned out wonderful. So you're going to season the top with whatever seasonings you want on top. Um, we get a lot of seasonings from, uh, I'm just, this is not what, I'll get that one in a minute. This is not what we used on that, but we get a lot of seasonings from um, Backwoods through LEM products. Um, we get, this came from LEM. Um, no, this came from High Mountains. Um, breakfast sausage seasonings, okay, um, there's some more, this is High Mountain, okay, uh, P&S, seasons and spices, okay, so he finds these spices and he just plays around, at Bearded Butchers, okay, we got some of theirs, so he used on the first one a pepper blend and just coated the top of it thick, okay, then the other one, he used brown sugar and cinnamon and mixed it together and just coated that baby on top, okay? Now, he refrigerated this for 24 hours because you want the seasoning in there really good. You want the seasoning on top, your seasonings that you've got inside your meat. You want 
incorporated into the meat, the longer it sits, y'all, the more it soaks up those flavors and the better taste you'll get. The first refrigerator was just sit, leaving it in the refrigerator long enough to make the meat cold so it could be uh, run through the grinder the second time. Grind cold meat or partially frozen meat. Now, this is where you're going to get into the 24-hour refrigerating process, okay? I hope I'm not confusing you. I'm just trying to do the best I can, y'all. The first refrigerating time was just to get the, keep the meat cold so we can run it through the grinder the second time. This one, after you've got, you've formed your loaves, you've put your seasonings on top, now you really want to let it sit in the refrigerator 24 hours in the pan that you're going to use to smoke it, okay? Lined with saran wrap, okay? So please keep it in there 24 hours at least. You want those flavors, okay? If you don't let those flavors incorporate, you're going to be missing out on the flavor, okay? You're going to be missing out on the tastes, okay? Now, after 24 hours, you're going to remove from the refrigerator, and now you're going to flip it over, okay? <clears throat> Take that saran wrap, okay? It's going to help get it out of the bottom of that pan when you flip it over. Then you can pull back the saran wrap, okay? It's not going to stick. You're going to pull it back. Take it off, throw it away, okay? Now you're going to coat that. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> you're going to coat that side with the same seasonings. Your, whatever seasonings. Coat the, coat, the neck, coat the other side with the same seasonings, okay? Now is where um, you're going to preheat your smoker. You don't have to put this back in the refrigerator for 24 hours after the, after the flip. You can if you want to, but <clears throat> while after he flipped it and he coated the seasonings, he started preheating his smoker to 180 degrees. Get your smoker up to 180 degrees. This bacon, y'all, is smoked. Um, if you want to do it in the oven, I don't know temperature and time because we didn't do it in the oven. We have a smoker and we wanted this smoked. So, I'm not for sure. Okay? So, he did, he, he let the, he preheated the smoker to 180 degrees. He smoked it until the internal temperature was 150 degrees. Okay? This has to reach 150 degrees internal temperature. He has probes that he, he sticks in there and gets it to that temperature, okay? Now, after smoking, put it in the refrigerator for 24 hours. This is your second 24 hour, letting it marinate, incorporating those seasonings, 24 hours before you smoke it, 24 hours after you smoke it. Y'all, it's gotta take on these seasonings and these flavors or it's not gonna taste right. Okay, it's not going to turn out right in the curing process. Okay, now, oh, y'all, we were so tempted to just hurry up and take this out of the fridge and take a bite. But we waited patiently. We waited that 24 hours. <clears throat> we got it out of the refrigerator the next morning. Then we got to taste test that baby. We taste tested both, both of them, and it was so good, y'all. And then we held some back. And we fried some up just like we were frying bacon. Just enough to kind of get it a little uh, crispy on both sides, okay? You're not wanting to fully cook it again. You're just wanting to get that little crisp on both sides of it. And we had that for breakfast. But the remaining loaf, he took it and used a deli slicer, okay? And sliced the slab like bacon slices, I don't know how many packages we wound up with because we wound up giving our boys some and they love it. One of them likes one better than the other. You know, so taste testers, y'all. Let them taste test, okay? Um, then we, uh, we separated all those slices into meal portions and we put them in vacuum seal bags and we vacuum sealed them, okay? So, um, just make sure, y'all, the resting times... And the refrigerating, please take your time. Don't rush this process, okay? So, just to recap, 
You're going to take your meat, 50-50 deer, pork butt, okay? Grind them together. Put your seasonings in there. Run it through that first grind. Get those seasonings in there. Put that meat in the refrigerator just to make it cold. So you can run it through the second grind without it gumming up in your grinder, okay? Then you're going to line your pans, push it all down in there, pat it all down in there, meet the corners, season the top of it, put it in the refrigerator 24 hours, let it incorporate those seasonings, take it out the next day, flip it over, discard the saran wrap, season the other side, preheat your smoker to 180 let it smoke till it reaches 150 degrees temperature. Smoke it. Let it cool off. Then put in your refrigerator for another 24 hours to get those seasonings, y'all, and the curing process. Then the next day, you can play. <laughs> you can take it out, slice it up, and then package it up. And then, y'all, it turned out like spam, salami, cold. Like I said, We've been eating it with cheese and crackers on a sandwich, frying it up like bacon, frying it up like spam. We got two for the price of one, okay? Now, for this summer sausage, all he, he used the same process. He used the same size pans, okay? He, we already had the, the ground uh, pork butt in there or the ground chuck okay we already had that in there we didn't have to run that through the grinder two times all he had to do was take the chuck take the ground chuck and then put it in his tubs mix in the seasonings okay mix them in real good okay and um he may have run it through the grinder just to just to make sure the seasonings were incorporated but it was already ground okay he might have just ran it through the grinder again just to make sure the seasonings was all through the meat, okay? And then, same process, okay? It was just a different meat, different seasonings. On this summer sausage, uh, I think this is it right here, At Adkins Farm Style Sausage Seasonings. I think this is what he used for the summer sausage. And I've got a picture of what he used for the um, deer bacon. I will, I will put that at the end of the video, okay? I will make sure I get the right seasonings that he used for the summer sausage and the deer bacon, and I'll make sure I'll include a picture at the end of the video so you can get your reference and see what he used. Any summer sausage seasoning will do. That's just the company's brand that we use, okay? But the summer sausage, the cheese, Sorry, y'all, it's already been used. This is a high-temperature cheddar cheese and a high-temperature pepper jack cheese, okay? And then he used, does this have it in there? No. He bought dried jalapenos. I don't, he must have already used the package because I don't see it in here. So he must have used... The jalapeno. I don't, this is what's left over of this. Okay, so I don't see the dried jalapenos in here. I will get the information and find out where he ordered this stuff from, and I'll put it in the description box below. But I wanted you to know, you need a smoking cheese, not a cheese that's going to melt. Because if you just use cheddar, regular cheddar cheese or pepper jack cheese, it's going to melt and make a mess in your smoker and your, your summer sausage. You want the high temp smoking cheese. So when you're looking for your ingredients to do this, make sure you get some uh, curing for the bacon and for the summer sausage, you need a cure, okay? Uh, on, the, on the bacon, he used the pink and it looks like this one might be a white curing. I'll find out y'all. And then uh, the seasonings that you want for the inside, of course, he used the breakfast for the bacon, breakfast uh, seasonings for the bacon. And then for the summer sausage, he used the sausage seasoning, okay? And then the cure. Y'all, the summer sausage, we've been eating it just with cheese and crackers. 
uh, or, or crackers. I'm not kidding, y'all. We have just, we love it. So, the bacon, we got two for the price of one. We got a breakfast, and then we got a sandwich or a BLT, or just sitting down eating it with cheese and crackers, okay, as a snack, appetizer. And then the summer sausage. Now, <clears throat> your summer sausage, he didn't do this, but he could have. You're thinking, wait a minute, summer sausage is supposed to be in the links. Okay, yes it is. And we have the sausage stuffer. We have the, the casings, okay? You can do that. But since he's never made this before, and we needed to get the seasonings right, and the coatings right, and the technique right, he did it like he did the bacon, okay? But it still turned out good, y'all, just cutting it in slabs. I, you can do it in the loaf pans if you don't have a if you don't have a sausage stuffer, whoo, say that fast. Okay, if you don't have a sausage stuffer, you can still use the loaf pans. We have one, but like I said, he was just experimenting. He wanted to see how this was going to turn out first. So the next time, he may use his attachments, and this is the paper for the links, the casing. Okay, so we have a sausage stuffer, and he may do it next time, and make the links, and then we put it in the casing, stuff it in the casings, okay? You don't have to. Next time, he may do that, okay? So, y'all, I hope y'all try this. I hope I've explained it good enough, okay? Um, I'll keep this piece of paper, and I will put, put, put the, y'all, I can't talk, put the directions in the description box below too because uh, i'm afraid to throw this away <laughs> in case somebody might comment later and have a question okay i might put all this in the description box below and i will try to figure out what all seasonings he used for one and then of course your summer sausage you're going to use a different seasoning um there's a difference between your breakfast seasonings that you can use for bacon or sausage than your summer sausage seasonings. There's a taste difference, okay? I will try to get all this rounded up and see what all he used and if he can remember, and I'll write this down and I will put it all in the description box below. But y'all, you've got a bacon, you've got spam salami out of the bacon. Your summer sausage, using the same technique, same directions, just with a different meat, different seasonings, you got a summer sausage. Y'all, we're loving it. When we just want a snack and we're not really hungry for lunch, we just come in here and get some summer sausage out or get some of the bacon and eat it cold. If we want some bacon for breakfast, I'll fry us up some bacon. Y'all, play, experiment, don't be afraid to try things. That's exactly what he did. He's like, I want to try this. Go for it, okay? It's your kitchen. Play, okay? Find some different things to do with your venison, your deer meat. Find some different things to do with it besides just your basic cooking it, you know, in recipes. Branch out a little further. Try you some bacons. Try you some summer sausage. Just put your hard work that you've hunted or you've went and you've bought this pork and stuff or chuck, uh, ground chuck on sale. Y'all, put this, put your resources to use. Turn it into something delicious. Don't be afraid to experiment, okay? That's exactly what he just did. We He just played. I wish I could have got some more footage. Um, I do have some pictures that I will insert at the end of the video. And I also have them numbered. Oh, okay. The directions are on my pictures too, okay? I took pictures as he got done with the process, just passing through the kitchen, chasing a granddaughter, okay? And I put the numbers on the pictures with the steps. And then I will try to take pictures of the seasonings and, and get him to tell me because he's not here for me to ask right now. So all of the information will be in the description box below and at the end of the video, okay? Y'all, play, 
in your kitchen. Play with your resources. Experiment. Play with your food. Y'all, I say that all the time. Play with your food. If y'all try this, please let me know how it turns out for you and what seasonings you may have used and what you may have done different. If you found a way to do it in the oven, okay, tell me. There is a way to do it in the oven on a lower temperature because you're not wanting to bake it. It's a slow process, but I'm not for sure, y'all, so I'm not even going to chase that rabbit, okay? Experiment. If y'all find something, let me know. If you try it a different way, let me know. If you try and you, you, you've taste tested, please let me know. I want to know what you've done, okay? So, I will see y'all in the comments and I will see y'all in the